Hey, Trey Campbell here coming at you with another training video. This will be titled, How to Trade My Charts. Very simple. I'm going to take you through step by step so you can know exactly what I'm looking at at the exact time on your own without me. And you can, you can see exactly what I see. Now, let's start. I'm going to start with this YM chart here. And I'm going to show you this okay so every night I'm gonna draw these three lines uh, these deviation lines right these uh, negative one and a half negative one negative five the POC which is always cutting through the value area box here right and then you're gonna have the plus five the plus one and the plus one and a half my only job at night when I send these charts out the only thing that I do is I simply start from the four hour chart and I find the deviation level that's cutting through what would be considered uh, support and resistance right or supply and demand and in this case here we have a pretty unique situation because if you look right here so where these these negative five D and negative one and negative one and a half where this comes in we do not have support on the four hour chart till negative one and a half right because you can simply all you have to do is look left you can see this right here right in many days right we've not had support um, the, the the negative five hasn't acted as support really you know it's come down but it's never really come to that level to test it um, now later it did but it look how it broke it and then came back up so you know it wasn't very well respected so we don't have really any great um, demand until this negative one and a half or 25,243 level right but now to the upside so you gotta imagine we're right here at this point uh, during the day so you know we don't know that this thing is gonna go up so what we have to do is we have to make a trade plan right so from this four hour chart what I then do is I look for the nearest well respected easy to see uh, resistance or supply and you can easily see supply right here right where it has used this level for supply and dumped and that's the only kind of move that I'm looking for it not even this not even here to, not even from here to here I mean all, all I really need is from here to here realistically you know for me to get in a trade and out of a trade so all I'm doing is I'm finding the nearest resistance correct and we've also got some resistance up here that's why I have a uh, mark there uh, there's a little bit of resistance right there if it wanted to plus we got the Keltner um, and it would be a lower high entry as well if we got the these transformer sell triggers right uh, this is a great tool if you do not know about it. Uh, basically, an RSI, you've got the overbought, oversold lines, just like an RSI, and then, but instead, in here, you've got these four moving averages, and they move fast to slow, and and uh, the more you can get up over overbought, and then they start putting in arrows. You know, that's a good that's a good sell trigger, or a good you know just a tool to have. So anyway let's move on so um, let me clear this chart off so the one thing I would look for here at this level if, if we're going to enter into this level is two things so now now that we know that this level is good you need to write that down or put you in a mark uh, to alarm yourself when this is triggered I usually put them about right there a little under you see that so I put this one a little bit under the actual mark and what we're looking for when it comes into this deviation is structure okay what I mean by structure is we don't need it to be in you know coming up in here and being all messy I want nice and clean so let's break it down I'm gonna show you exactly how to enter this trade or how I entered this trade today and killed it so I then once I've discovered the uh, the best supply and demand I will watch the chart on the I will watch it on the 15 minute and um, 
just because it gives you a simpler look and and once an alarm is triggered which would trigger somewhere about right here okay as we're moving up this morning I then drop down to the one minute chart okay I then drop down to the one minute chart and I then start waiting for my entry now how do I find my entry very very simple all right look it comes up to this plus one deviation to a tick 25,810 so I know without a shadow of a doubt that that is our good supply zone right <clears throat> excuse me and and it pulls back and then it moves up but we've not moved up into a territory of really over overbought again you know so I stay patient and I wait for this thing to cycle back up and get overbought again see it outside that Keltner and then I enter here as high as I can outside of this Keltner um, and once I do that you know I take this this move here generally like to test the uh, the low and take a new low but in this case here I was up pretty good and I, I just took the money off the table now this chart actually give you another entry right here and what's funny about it is it just so happened that it came up just enough because you know everybody that was short in this market right had stop losses and stuff put right there right over this blue mark to buy the market back and we also had a huge amount of supply right here so what happened was this thing come right back up punched through and made just a new high just over this line and then fails and then comes back it can't get over it, it fails again guess what that's another short entry right there okay um, and I shorted this part as oh sorry shorted that as well this whole area right here uh, once this failed I jumped back in with a uh, uh, out of the money um, and uh, and took this trade down and it worked out really well so but what you're looking for in those moments you're looking for the best supply the best demand and even if you had to take take the first leg here where it punched up to it the only thing with taking that first leg is it could just punch through and keep going strong so you want to make sure if you get in on the first leg you're, you're getting into some cheap uh, out of the money stuff or uh, you're going in light because you want that second entry <clears throat> if it's a good viable signal it's going to give you two or three chances to get in point blank and I, I do most of my binaries on the daily uh, the daily binaries so I've got plenty of time for this to work uh, I was never in this one very long I took profits I jumped in this one here and took profits this one was out of the money so I had to hold it a little longer but uh, but this was a that, let me just tell you this right here this trade right here was a hundred percent gain so if that makes any sense to you I, I bought out uh, some out of the money contracts for uh, $25 I think somewhere around in there uh, maybe $27 and I sold them for 50 so I only had fifty dollar total loss on this uh, trade here, and the the return on this two twenty five dollar contracts was fifty dollars, and then I made fifty dollars. Now this trade over here yielded me about a hundred dollars, a little bit more, like one hundred and twenty three dollars, and then the second trade yielded me fifty dollars off of a fifty dollar purchase price. So I purchased them for fifty dollars. And I sold them for a hundred, so that made me a hundred percent gain, right? Um, and it was easy money. So if you uh, need more uh, on this, on the educational part about exactly how I look for these trades, you're going to know exactly. If you just pay attention to this video, you're going to know exactly where the best supply and demand zones are. We know that we're not interested in buying this chart until it gets all the way down. No matter what it does, we know that 
it's not viable to this level. It's just not. You know, it might it might bounce and it might bounce here, it might bounce there. <clears throat> That's great. I'm not interested in it. I've got my area. I know where the best uh, demand is, and I'm going to wait on it. Just like uh, up here, I knew there was supply on the four-hour time frame, right? So on the higher time frame, we confirmed that there was supply. Then all we have to do is be patient enough to wait for it to come up and just start smacking those uh, binaries, whatever you want to trade, and however much you want to trade. You know, uh, $50 isn't enough, 150 bucks or 170 bucks is not enough for you. Uh, well, up your contract size, trade uh, 30, 40, 50 contracts, you know, and then you're you're looking at a really good day. You, you, you know, get up to 100 contracts, you're, you're looking at easy multiple thousands of dollars a day. So it's uh, it's all on what you want. I, I like these these types of trades and this is the size that I'm at right now so I'm, I'm comfortable with that and I'm comfortable going up to you know about 15 contracts 20 contracts just depending on what the case may be uh, but you you have to figure that out too you know if you're starting with a small account you want to start with one contract you know there's uh, you know a, a $20 winner a uh, $25 winner right there. There's 50 bucks right there. And just those two trades. Just those two trades. If you're trading a $500 account and you can make 50 bucks on this one chart, not to mention another chart, I'm going to take you to another chart and I'm going to show you something else. I got to show you this stuff. This is just crazy. These charts are amazing. You just got to know how to read them. And if you know how to read them, you're, it's, it's easy money, you know? So look here on CL this morning. Uh, right here, but right at the bell, right at about 9.28, uh, we had this huge surge, and then we pulled back. Now, if you look at the past, we're not near eight, any any of these lines. Let's, let's do this. Let's drop down really fast. Let's do this really fast here. Drop down to the four-hour, okay? Okay. So we know, by looking at the four-hour, we have... Some demand right here at the negative one, 5819 area, 5819, 5820, somewhere in there. And we also know that we have demand right here at 5775. This is why it's important to, to really get that change control because this thing could bust through and come on down to this demand. Uh, and then you would kind of be stuck, you know, having to play both of these just to get out of this one. So. Waiting on that change control can keep you out of this one and get you into the right one. However, sometimes if you don't jump in, uh, if you wait for the second leg, sometimes you'll miss the whole trade altogether. But either, either way, we know that there's uh, demand here as well, even at the negative one and a half. So we've got demand here, and we've got demand here. Uh, and, and one would say we've got demand right here as well. So all the way down we have demand. You know, if this chart decides to go lower, we can say any of these are viable, right? To the upside, however, we know that this was a little bit of uh, supply here. And then we broke through it and tried to hold it as support and failed. So what happens when we come up through it today? Well, it's going to try to do the same exact thing, and it came all the way to the tip top here. If you'll notice here on this Keltner, we're overbought, right? So we know that this is an area of resistance because it's trying to break to a new high. Now, this thing's either going to break hard to the new high or it's going to fail. However, that's not the trade I took. I actually took a long position in this this morning, and I, want to, I just want to try to explain to you my thought process behind that, you know, because of this right here. We tested it, we failed, then we broke through it, then we tried to hold, and then we failed. And now we're back, and we're testing it, trying to test it, and, and, and we're going to hold. So we're going to go for this level right here, this plus one, for a target. And let me drop down back down to the one minute for you. 
and show you exactly how this happened. So if you look, before this thing got up there, we know this is the level that's trying to break for the new high, right? The 6040 level. Came to 6038 and failed. So we know now that that was a very high supply level. They couldn't even, the bulls couldn't even get it in this zone, couldn't even pierce the armor of the bears to get it up even to that line before it sold off. So what did I do? So at the open, we're floating in the middle here, right? Now we just had this really hard bullish push and we've trended up all night. So I highly doubt that this thing is going to sell past this one deviation so what do I do I wait for this thing to get over over uh, sold which was right here we got the the uh, the, the uh, Fisher transformer there that is telling me to that we're over oversold as well I've got this oversold so what I did I entered a position right there to the upside a small position five contracts willing to build a, a position to this to use it as support to try to push for that negative one and a half. Now, it didn't quite make it, but I did get those five contracts and it pushed up and I made a hundred bucks on this trade. So you can see the difference there. When you're when you're in between these lines, there's also plays, especially by looking to the left. We know where the supply and demand is. We just gotta run when we're in between the lines and they're they're spaced out enough for us to make profit, we have to go where with what the charts telling us you know are the bulls in control are the bears in control uh, where are the bulls wanting to take this chart you know where are the bears wanting to take this chart and in this case you know we've got this bull rush here we were trending up all night I knew this pullback was going to be met with some heavy buying for this push and I jumped in so when you're in between the lines there's still some trades but there again if you look and wait here you know we we couldn't quite get there and then we sold off and then we come back up look we're over overdone in this area right here we start getting those triggers right about here and but these lines are up here you know so as we're coming up in here you could have nailed a position there as well and took this thing back down to uh, 59.96 and been uh, been in profit as well uh, however, I didn't take that trade. I just took this push in the morning, and uh, and it worked out really good. So I just want to throw that out there. I know this is kind of a long video, but I want you guys to understand exactly how I take these trades and how what I look for, because I'm not always posting buy here, sell here, and and the problem with that is you know I'm just not a real great multitasker. So by the time I'm I'm concentrating on the trade, and by the time I'm in it. It's already after the fact. So even if I was to send you, hey, I'm in this trade, you're, it's too late most of the time. You know, I can't, it's just really hard for me to do that. And I'm getting better. But the best way I can do this is to teach you exactly what I'm looking for. So you know where, where I'm at even before I'm there, you know. And uh, if I say, hey, looking at YM, you can pull the chart up and you know exactly what I'm looking at. So that's that's exactly how I play it. And you know uh, one thing to look for too another thing that I do not do is with supply and demand if you look here I don't really concentrate on like this being supply I'm, I'm sorry demand um, old support or old resistance is new support so if this thing was to come down into this area uh, I don't I don't really like using that I like old known uh, support you know so like right here <clears throat> we know we know this is support right because the chart actually came down into this and tested and proved that there was buyers sitting there so let me ask you this why wouldn't there be buyers sitting there there would be right more than likely more times than not there's going to be buyers sitting right there as well or even here or here so you know because we had these buyers here so this was a hot market hot zone in here so we know that there's buyers just sitting right here right here if this wasn't here and we didn't have this support buy right here which tells me that there is buyers right here if we, all we have was this I wouldn't use it I would actually drop down 
to here somewhere and use that because look we've got proven support right here I'm not going to use new resistance uh, as as our old resistance as support until it's tested and trusted once it's tested and trusted I, I believe in it that's just another little thing there too so when you're looking for support and resistance look for actual support and resistance where did the where did these candles have struggles at you know where did uh, where did they find support at you know you can obviously see right there so look for that when you're looking on the charts that's all I got if you've got any questions on this uh, at all anything you know where I'm at uh, hit me up and uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you for free there's a lot of good free stuff out there too you know you just gotta look a lot of people charging money for this stuff you know we're doing it for free so we're doing it for free because uh, we don't need your money we trade we're traders so we have a free chat room you know why not share our knowledge and what we know and uh, you know I think that we can help you out tremendously if you'll just come in the room and give it a chance uh, give us a shot and give Nadex and trading a shot trading futures and commodities a shot and with these charts here it makes it so easy for you you know you already know the deviations you know the bell curve you know the support and resistance you know you know all this stuff so all you got to do is just wait for it and then take advantage of it it's simple so anyway uh, thanks for watching till next time